the Gemara says in the Dorim that in the beginning, this question was asked to the smart people of, of that generation and to the prophets of that generation, and nobody was able to answer the question, what was the reason of the loss of the land? Till HaKadosh Baruch himself came and gave the answer and explained what was the reason of the destruction of the first temple. And the language of the Pasuk is, in the answer that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave, Al they left the Torah that I gave in front of them, they didn't listen into my voice, and the Gemara presents a question over there, what does it mean? It says, they didn't listen to my voice, and they didn't go in the way of the Torah. It seems to present the same thing. They didn't listen to my voice, and they didn't go in the way of the Torah. The going of the way of the Torah is listening in my voice, and the opposite also. So why does it say twice, also v'loishomu b'koili, also v'loihol chubo? And the Gemara answers that from that Rav Yudah learned that the problem was that they stopped to bless the blessing that we have to bless every day on the Torah, the blessing that's called <coughs> Birkas HaTorah. And the Ran explains over there that even though that the language of the Pasuk was al ozva mestorosi, that they left the Torah, and we would have think maybe that they stopped learning, and that was maybe the reason for the loss of the land. But the Ran says that Chazal understood that that can't be the Pshat and the Pasuk, that they left Torah, they stopped learning Torah, and that's why there was a loss of the land. Because if that would be the situation, that they stopped learning Torah, everybody would be able to answer. It's a simple question. If they stop learning Torah, that's the reason for the loss of the land. And the Chachomim, the smart people of that generation, would know to answer it. The prophets would know to answer it. So it must be that they continue to learn Torah. But what was the problem if they were learning Torah? The problem was that they didn't respect enough the quality of the Torah and how Torah is important in the Chashivus of the Torah. And the sign for it was they, they stopped blessing in the morning Birkas HaTorah. Because if they would have the right respect of learning Torah, they would say Birkas HaTorah. Why did they stop saying Birkas HaTorah? Because that they didn't learn Lishmo and they didn't have the right respect <coughs> to the Torah. And that's why the Gemara learns out Al Ozvam Esterosi Ashanasati Lifneyem that there was a stage that they didn't have enough respect for the Torah, and because they didn't have enough respect for the Torah, they stopped blessing Bilkas HaTorah, and that's the reason for the loss of the land. So the Achronim, in a couple of places, asked a couple of questions, a couple of thorough questions on this Gemara. The first question that's supposed to be asked is how could it be for something that seems like a small sin, that there should be such a big punishment like the loss of the land. We all know that there's all kinds of levels of learning Torah. There's a level of learning Nishma, that a person should learn Torah with the meaning and with the thought that a Kaddish Baruch Hu, that's the will of a Kaddish Baruch Hu. The Nefesh Chaim explains that lishmo means that a person should learn with a meaning, with a thought, that he should have success in the Torah. He doesn't have to think the whole time that he's doing it for the will of a Kaddish Baruch Hu. That he has to do before he starts learning. But while he's learning, he should have that meaning and that thought that he's learning to have a special success in Torah, to grow, to be a big Talmud Chacham. But whatever lishmo is, that's the higher level of learning. But there's all kinds of levels of learning. The Ramchal says that any Torah that a person learns, no matter what, no matter which level he is, in a spiritual level, but every word of Torah that he learns has a special affection, a special influence 
on the person that's learning the Torah. And Chazal say, we know there's a Gemore, mitoich sheloi lishmo, the Gemore in Psochim in Dafnun, the Gemore says, le'oilom yilmad odom Torah sheloi lishmo. Even if he's not on a high level, and he can't learn with that thought that's needed for the higher level of learning Torah, he can't learn with that meaning. But mitoich sheloi lishmo, he should learn, sheloi lishmo, mitoich sheloi lishmo, balishmo, from learning on a lower level, he'll get to learning to the higher level. So how could it be that if that's the whole sin, that they didn't respect enough the Torah, and that's why they stopped saying the bracha, that could be such a big sin, that because of that, it should be the loss of the land, it should be the destruction of the first temple? even though, for sure, that's preferable to learn on a higher level, but if they were learning and they did not stop learning, how could that be considered as such a big sin? It's a small sin, and how can we understand there's such a big punishment on something that it's hard to understand even that it's considered as a sin? It's something preferable to learn in a higher level, but how could that be a reason for the loss of the land? That's the first question. The second question is, that there's another Gemara. The Gemara in human Daftesam with Beis, the Gemara yes, over there, presents the question, Mipnei ma chorav bais rishon. Why was the first temple destroyed? And the Gemara answers over there <coughs> that that was because the Shaloi Shaveros Hamurois, those three sins that are considered as the worst sins, Avoidazore, Gilorayas, Shvichos Domim, worshiping idol, murder, and idolatry. So the Gemara and Yuma says that in that time, there was those three sins that are considered the worst sins that there are. So how could we have a different Gemara that comes and tells us that it was because that they didn't bless and they didn't respect enough the Torah? It's a contradiction. It's all that, all that. If we have in that time those three sins, so why, when they were asking the smart people of that generation, they didn't know the answer. They didn't know that those three worst sins are enough of a reason to a loss of the land. The prophets couldn't explain it. Why do we need only that HaKadosh Baruch should explain it? And even the answer of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, why, why is that the answer that they didn't respect? We have a different answer that they did those three worst sins. Another question, the third question, is that it's interesting, in those same psukim, in Yirmiya, after the Pasuk says, that the Gemara learns from that, that they didn't respect enough the Torah, and that's why they stopped blessing on the Torah, the Pasuk right after that, the verse right after that verse is, that that Pasuk itself says that they're worshiping idol in that time. So how could it be that the Gemara is explaining one pasuk that says before that the reason of the loss of the land, the Alma of the Oretz, is because that they didn't respect enough the Torah, they didn't bless? And a pasuk right after that, in that parak, right after that, it says that they were working on the Zohar in that time. So it could be that that's the reason. How could you say that the reason is because that they didn't <coughs> bless and they didn't respect enough the Torah? And the answer for all these questions are that there's a Gemara in Soito in Daf Chofalef. The Gemara says that the Torah has a power. Anybody that learns Torah, when he learns Torah, the Torah has a power that it should be a protection from the punishment that somebody could get. And therefore, we could suggest an explanation in this Gemara. There were a lot of years in the time of the first temple that the Jews sinned in those three sins. But all those years, there wasn't the loss of the land. And the meaning of the Gemara, when the Gemara explains this question, the Gemara means that the question on Ma of the Oretz wasn't what was the reason that there should be a loss of land. Everybody knew that there was a reason those three sins that are considered to be the worst sins. 
But there was a different question. Why did it take so much time? There was such a long time that there was sin, that they had those Averos Chamorais, and there wasn't the loss of the land, there wasn't the destruction. So what changed? What happened that suddenly, after years and years that they had those sins, and there was no destruction, no loss of the land, suddenly there was the loss of the land. What changed? That's what they couldn't explain. And as the Ran said, they saw there wasn't a change in their learning. They continued to learn. Because if they would stop learning and they would have those sins, everybody would understand. They have those sins that are considered to the worst three sins that there are. And they stop learning terror. They don't have anything to protect them. But the question was that there were so much years that they had those sins and they were continuing to learn terror. So what happened and what changed that there was a stage that the terror they were learning could not help them anymore and couldn't protect them anymore. So the answer to that question, what happened and what changed in that stage, we could explain <coughs> with what says in the Medrash. In the Medrash of Eicha, it says that HaKadosh Baruch Hu forgived for those three worst of errors, for Gilo Arais and Shvichos Domin Avedezore, Viter HaKadosh Baruch Hu Avedezore, the Gilo Arais and Shvichos Domin. HaKadosh Baruch Hu forgived for those sins. And here we see that there was a long time that there was those sins, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu forgave to that. Veloi Viter HaKadosh Baruch Hu Al Moa Social Teor. What does Moa Social Teor mean? So the Mephoshim, the Medrash, say something that's very thorough in understanding of the power of the Torah that a person learns. We all know that the right way to learn Torah is to learn it with pleasure and to enjoy the learning. There's a famous Avnei Nezer, that Avnei Nezer said that there was people in his time that thought that maybe if they'll enjoy the learning and they'll have pleasure when they're learning, maybe that will take off of the right way to learn because it's something that they're taking for themselves and maybe they're losing a little in the higher level of learning. Maybe you have to learn only with Yira Shomayim and the higher level to learn is without taking pleasure, without enjoying the learning. And Davinezer says that they made a big mistake because Adarab, the more you enjoy the learning, the more you have pleasure when you learn, you have pleasure from the learning, from the way you're learning, you get more connected to the Torah. And you could get more from what the Torah could affect a person because you're more connected. The more you like what you're doing, the more pleasure you have what you're doing, the more enjoy that you have from what you're doing, you get more connected. The more connected you are, the more influence the Torah has on you. So after we have that Avni Nezer, We'll mention now what the commentaries say on more social terror. They say that even though Klal Yisrael had those three sins, they were learning the whole time and they enjoyed the learning. And they had pleasure from the learning. Even though it wasn't, like we'll see later on, they were already in a stage that it wasn't in a high level, the learning that they were supposed to learn. But they still enjoyed and liked the learning that they were learning. <clears throat> Therefore, that Torah was a protection, was a tzala, was a, a protection, was a agona, Torah magne, like the, the Gemara says in Soita, in Daf Chofalev, that Torah protected them, even though it wasn't on a high level, but as long as they were learning and they were connected to the learning because they enjoyed the learning, they had pleasure from the learning, that Torah protected them not to get a punishment, even though that they, were, <clears throat> they had those three sins. But when it came more social Torah, and they learned it from the Pasuk, al Ozvam Esterosi, leaving the Torah means not that they stopped learning. Sometimes something is called leave, even if you're not close to it, even if you're not connected to it. Like you say, Ben Azuv, there could be a son that he's still alive, but he's not near his father. It's called a Ben Azuv. Al Ozvam Esterosi means that they didn't have the handle on the Torah anymore because they were less connected. And that was the stage that happened. All the time, all the years 
that they had those three sins, but they were learning Torah and they enjoyed the Torah, they had pleasure from the Torah, that Torah had the power to protect them from the punishment. But when they stopped, when they stopped having that pleasure, even though that they were learning, that Torah couldn't protect them anymore. And from this we could learn what's the difference of the power of the Torah when somebody enjoys, like what Avni Nezah says, that you're more connected, and when somebody does not enjoy his learning, he's doing it for some kind of reason, for <clears throat> to get a position or for any different cheshbon that he has, but he's, he doesn't enjoy, he doesn't have pleasure from the learning itself. And that's why in that stage, when they stopped having annoy, when they didn't enjoy anymore the learning, the Torah had less power and there wasn't the power of the Torah that could help them, that that should be a protection not to get the punishment that they're supposed to get on those three worst of errors. And now, there's an interesting Chiddush in this, because that really the Gemara in Saito says that the Torah has two powers. One power that the Torah has is to protect the person from to get a punishment that he's supposed to get. Like in this case that we're talking about that all those years they had this, those three worst sins. So there was a reason that they should get a punishment. But the Torah, it was a protection that they shouldn't get the punishment on the whole time that they were still learning and having pleasure from the learning. But there's another question that's supposed to be raised. The Gemara in Saito in Daf Aleph says that the Torah has two powers. One power, what we mentioned, is that the Torah is a protection not to get a punishment. But there's another power that says in the Gemara that the power of the Torah is that when you learn Torah, it saves you not to sin. The, the Lashon of the Gemara, the language of the Gemara is Torah magne umatzle. And Rashi explains over there, magne is a protects from a person not to get a punishment, a punishment even though that he had sins, but it's a protection. If you're connected to the Torah, you're not going to get that punishment. But there's another power of the Torah, that that power is called matzle. And Rashi explains over there that matzle means that it saves a person not to sin. So then the question that's supposed to be raised is, so why, if they were still learning Torah, they didn't stop learning Torah <clears throat> till the last minute. They didn't have, they didn't enjoy the learning like we said at the end when it happened that God said that they should be the loss of the land. But all those years that they had those sins and they were learning, why we did not find the second power that the power of the Torah is that it saves a person from the sin. So there's two answers for this question. One answer is that the only time we could guarantee that if a person learns, he's not going to sin and he'll have that power to save him from the sin, that's really only Torah on the high level. So there was a couple of stages. When Kilal Yisrael were learning Torah on the high level and they were learning Torah Lishma, really it helped them and they had the second power that it saved them not to sin. They had that power. But the first stage was, like what says in the Ran, that they didn't respect enough the Torah and they didn't learn Torah Lishma. And that part, even though that it says together Torah Magno Matzle, there's a difference. The power of the Torah that helps a person not to sin, that's on a higher level. Only then you could guarantee that a person would not sin. Any Torah helps a person, like we mentioned before, and has an influence on the person. It can help him, like the Ramchal says a couple of places, any Torah that learns at any level. But to have a guarantee that you won't fall to sin and it'll save you from sinning, that's only Torah on the high level. And when they lost the high level, that was the first stage 
that they learned the first power of Torah, that Torah could save a person from not the sin. So they did not have that sola. Therefore, they had the sins, those three sins. The second stage was, now even if they lost the first power, they still had the second power that they had that power of the terror that could guarantee that a person won't get a punishment and it'll save him not to get the punishment. But then after there was a second stage that they also did not enjoy the terror and therefore they weren't connected enough to the terror, then they lost also the second power of the terror, Magna Matsu, the terror couldn't protect anymore. And it went in stages. The first stage they lost the matzle, that the Torah did not save them from not doing the sins. And the second stage, when they did not enjoy the Torah that they learned, then they, learned, they lost the second power of the protection of the Torah, that Torah has a, a power to protection not to get the punishment. And really, there's a raya for that, that the first power that we're talking about of matzle, that that helps a person not to sin, that that's only on Torah Lishmo. There's a Gemara in Sanhedrin in Dav Tzadik Tesamud Beis. The Gemara says over there, Kol HaOisek B'Torah Lishmo. Whoever learns Torah in the higher level with the right thought and the right meaning, that that's the higher level to learn because that's the will of God, to learn, like the Nefesh Chaim says, with a thought that I want to be successful in learning, I want to know Shas, I want to know Chumash, I want to know Mishnayis, to have success in the learning. So the Gemara says over there, may seem sholem befamalyo shel malo, befamalyo shel mato. That a person that learns Torah lishmo, so he, because of him, there's sholem befamalyo shel malo. The Marsha explains, what is the meaning, may seem sholem befamalyo shel malo, why? Why somebody learns Torah lishmo, that puts Shalom B'Famal Yoshal Malo. Explains the Marsha that anybody that sins, we know that an angel is created from it, and that angel goes in front of God and tells God that this person has to get a punishment on this sin, whatever the sin was. If it's a small punishment for a small sin, if it's a big punishment for a big sin. But they come before HaKadosh Baruch and they're called Kategorim. They're the people that they're the angels that say in front of God, we have to deal with these people that did these sins and they're supposed to get these punishments. That makes Omachloikis in Famalia Shemalo. Because the Kadosh who really wants not to give a punishment to the Jews, to the sons of his that he likes. So that's called that there's Omachloikis in Famalia Shemalo. But when you learn Torah Lishma, says the Marshal, it saves you not to sin. So then there's Shalom B'Famalia Shemalo, because we don't have those angels that come and try to make a category to tell Kodesh Baruch Hu that these sons are supposed to get a punishment. So we see over there, when it's talking about the Gemara, wants to bring something that causes that a person does not sin, and therefore there's Shalom B'Famalia Shemalo. What does the Gemara bring? Kola Oiseg Batero Lishmo. Because for that, you need Torah Lishma. So we see over here that for the first power that helps a person not to sin, that you need a high quality of Torah, that you need on a higher level of Torah. If you always say but Torah Lishma, then you could guarantee that the Shalom B'Famalia Shal Malo. When you don't, when a person doesn't learn in the high level, so then there's not Shalom B'Famalia Shal Malo, and then they lose also, that power that's in learning Torah that saves you from to do a sin. There's also another way to explain the Gemara. There's a very interesting thought that Rabbi Yitzchak Blazer explained, a very interesting idea, and he says that the same thing is on Torah. The Gemara in Broches, in Daf Samach Beis and Beis, the Gemara brings, it says over there, the language of the Gemara is, the Gemara brings over there that if somebody does not respect the begodim, the clothes, 
So that at the end, he won't be able to enjoy what a normal person enjoys from having clothes that it could warm him up. And the Gemara brings that David HaMelech, when he was running away, when he was escaping from Shaul, so he cut a piece of the coat that Shaul, Shaul was wearing. And therefore, because he disrespect the clothes, therefore at the end of the days before, before he died, it was cold for him and people came and put on him clothes. So it says over there, Va'melech David Zokin Bobayomin. He was old. Va'yichasu Godim, And they were giving him clothes, blankets, and things that should warm him up. And it didn't help. And the Gemara explains that the reason was because that he cut the coat of show years before. Explains a bit of Blaza. What's the point over here? What's the Mido Keneged Mido? Why because of that, he won't have advantage from, from clothes after. So he explained, HaKadosh Baruch Hu put on a lot of things in the nature, things that people could have advantage from. If it's rocks to build, if it's stone to build furniture, if it's clothes that people should be warm with. There's all kinds of things that's a present that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us in all the material that's in the world the will of Hashem the whole time that we should have advantage from those things and that's why it's put in to the nature that you could have produced from these things, you could have advantage from these things. But that's only if a person respects those things. But if he disrespects it, so then he loses the advantage to get from those things. And that's why David Melech, in his level, it could be, it wouldn't be a claim on somebody on a lower level, but in his level, that he lived. So there was a claim on him, how could you do such a thing to cut a coat of a person that that's supposed to worm, and that's a present that we have from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that the clothes should warm us. And because that he disrespected those clothes. That's why after he did not have the advantage from the clothes that the clothes should warm him up. Says Rabbi Yitzhak Blaza that in the same way our connection to the Torah that we learn, if we respect the Torah that we learn, we have all the advantages that says that you can have in the Torah, and all the powers that says. But in the first stage, they didn't respect enough the Torah. They didn't learn Torah Lishma. So in that stage, they lost that power that the Torah could save a person from the sin. Because they, they didn't have enough respect. And even that maybe it's a small thing. We asked in the beginning that it's not a big sin. It's a small sin. But they had those three sins in that time. There was a reason that should be the loss of the land. There was a reason that they should be a chuban abais, but they needed a protection. And that protection is only if you learn Torah Lishma, if you learn on a higher level, and also, also if you respect the Torah in the, right, in the right way. If you don't respect it in the right way, you lose the strong power that the Torah has. The Torah has a power that you help a person that shouldn't sin. But when does the Torah have that power? The Torah has that power only if you know to respect with what you're dealing, how holy the Torah is, and what an influence the Torah can have on a person. When a person respects it, then he has that power that the Torah can protect him from the punishment. And like it says, the Gemara in Kiddushin says, Barosi Yitzhahora, Barosi Torah Tavlin. It goes into the creation that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that's how he built the world. That a person, even though that is Yitzhahora, but if he learned that will be the right medicine to help him, that he shouldn't have Yitzhahora. But even though that it was built in the creation, but it's the same thing exactly like we found by the clothes that when could you have the advantage 
to get what you can get and to use it in the right way is only if you respect the thing that you're dealing with. But if you don't respect what you're dealing with, so then you don't have that advantage. So therefore, even though that the Gemara and Saita and Daf says the Torah has the power to be a protection that a person shouldn't get a punishment that he's supposed to get. And Klal Yisrael had that protection because they were learning Torah. They were learning Torah all those years that they had those things. But they lost the respect that they had for the Torah. Therefore, they lost the first power that the Torah could not protect them. And that's why, really, they had those three sins, even though that the Gemara and Saita says that a person that learns Torah has the power to save a person not to do a sin, but they had those sins because that they didn't respect enough the Torah. Therefore, they did not have that power that says in the Gemara that Torah has a power to save a person from a sin. And therefore, it did not help them for not falling into the sin. And they were, they had those three sins. But as we said before, that the whole time they were continuing to learn, even though it wasn't on the highest level, they didn't have, they lost the first power. They didn't have the protection not to get the punishment. And they had that power, they still had that power of protection. They didn't have the power that saves a person not to sin. That's why they had the sins. But they still had the power that deters a protection not to get a punishment. And why did they have that protection? Because they were learning, they were enjoying the learning. They were connected to the learning. That's why they had that power of protection from the punishment. Till it got to the stage, as the Medrash says, more social terror. It got to a stage that people were learning for a reason, to get to a position, they wanted something else, and they used the terror as a tool to get to some kind of position that they were looking for. But they lost, they lost the enjoy, the pleasure that a person could have when he, when he learns. And therefore, because they lost that pleasure that they could have when they're learning, that's why they lost also the second power of the protection. And that's why it says, that because that there was more social terror, that they did not enjoy the terror, they lost also the protection. And then it was a reason that there should be the destruction of the first temple and the loss of the land. We asked the question in the beginning, how could it be that such a small sin that should be such a big punishment? The answer is, with what we spoke now, the punishment was on those three sins. And that's for sure enough of a reason to have a punishment like the loss of the land and the destruction of the first temple. But there was terror that they were learning and they were enjoying the terror. And that was our gone, that was the terror magnet, it was a protection that they shouldn't lose the land and that it shouldn't be the destruction of the first temple. But when there was more social terror, they stopped enjoying what they're learning. So then came the time that they're supposed to get a punishment on what? On the three sins. Because the deter stopped to be makne, couldn't protect anymore, it couldn't have that power. So we spoke about two powers. There's a power to save a person, to do a sin, but that's, you need a higher level of learning Torah, you need learning Torah lishma, and you also have to respect the Torah. When they lost that, then they lost the power that helps them not to sin, they had the three sins, but they were still learning Torah. When they were learning Torah and they enjoyed the Torah and they had a noise from the Torah, so therefore, that helped them. There was the, still the second power that protected them not to get the punishment. But when they stopped having a noise from the Torah, and the commentators say over there, that's why, if you want there, they stopped blessing the Torah because Birkas Torah is also like Birkas Ananim, that before any food we take, we say a blessing. So when they stopped enjoying the Torah, then they stopped blessing. And that was the stage that they didn't have any more the protection, and that was the time to give them a punishment on those three sins. With these things, maybe we, we can answer a very interesting question 
between two Gemoras. We mentioned the first Gemara in Yume, that over there it says that the destruction of the first temple was because of the three worst averas that there are. We mentioned the Gemara in Bob Metzir, the, the Gemara in Edorim, in Daf Aleph, and there's also Gemara in Bob Metzir. There's a very interesting question between two of the Gemaras. The Gemara in Edorim, when the Gemara explains where do we learn that they stop blessing on the Torah, the Gemara says, the sentence in the Gemara is, Hainu lo yishomu bekoili, hainu lo yilchobo. The Gemara presents a question, why does it say twice? They didn't listen to the voice of Hashem, and they didn't walk in the Torah, they didn't go in the Torah in the right way. And that was the source that from that they learned, as the Ran explains, they didn't learn the Shema, and because they didn't respect enough the Torah, therefore they stopped blessing. The Gemara in Bob Metzir does not bring that question, and the Gemara in Bob Metzir says something else. It says, because it says, Al Ozvom Esterosi the Gemara doesn't bring the language of that verse that's later on. The Gemara doesn't bring it. The Gemara brings a different part of the Pasuk. The Gemara brings, Al Ozvom Esterosi Ashonasati Lifneim. And the commentaries really ask, point out, it's the same idea that we learn, but they learn in two Gemaras from two different things. But with the things that we spoke over here, okay, we could answer this question. Alma of the Oretz, the question, why was the loss of the land, could include two questions. It could include the first question, how could it be there was loss of the land that we know that that was because of those three sins that are so bad, how could they, how could it be they sinned? How could it be they fell into the sin? Why wasn't that Torah that could help them not to sin? Where was the matzle? That could be one question. al does that could be included in the question. One question is, how could it be there was loss of the land because of those three bad averas? If they were learning in that time, why didn't the learning save them not to sin? That's one question. And the second question was, al does why it happened now? Why didn't it happen before? These three sins that it could be that the destruction is because of that and the loss of land is because of that, it was years and years. So what happened and what changed? So it could be the two of these Gemaras, each one is talking about a different question that's included in, in this sentence, al does why was the loss of the land? The Gemara in Bob Metzir, relates to the part of the question, Alma of Dots, why was the loss of the land? Why didn't that Torah that they were learning, why didn't it save them not to sin? As the power of the Torah that we learned that the Gemara in Saita says in Daf of Aleph, Torah Matzle, Torah saves a person not to sin. And that the answer comes, Shalishomu Bakoli Vlayilchuba. They didn't have enough respect for the Torah. They didn't learn on the higher level that's supposed to be. If they didn't learn on the higher level, they didn't go in the Torah in the right way. What is the right way? For sure the right way is the highest way that's possible that a person should learn. So when they stop learning in a way of Lishma, they didn't learn in the high level. They did not have enough respect. So then they lost the first power that's called Torah Matzle. And that's what the Gemara learns from that sentence, Leishomu Bekoli Velehil Chuba. But there's another part of the Pasuk. Al Ozvom Esterosi Ashonosati Lifneyem. That they left the Torah that I gave in front of them. So because that there's two verses, that's why the Gemara learned that that's talking about the second stage. The Gemara in the Dorim is talking about the first stage. Why didn't the Torah save them not to sin? And that the answer was because that the Torah, the power of the Torah that could save a person, not to sin, you need a high quality. You need the Torah in the highest level. You need Torah Lishma. But the second Gemara, the Gemara in Bab Metzir, learned from that verse that says, even if it says Lashon Bakari Vlayil Chuba, another verse. Al Ozvo Mestirosi Ashonasati Lifneyem. That verse is coming to talk about the second stage, about the second question. How could it be 
that there was a loss of the land. And if you'll answer, that it was because of those three worse sins that were, so why there was so much years that there wasn't the loss of the land? And that the answer is al-ozva mesterosi. And what does it mean? And also then, it does not mean that they stopped learning. The lotion of the Medrash is more social terror on this post, al-ozva mesterosi, that they stopped having pleasure and they didn't have the joy from what they're learning. And the right way is to have hanor from what you're learning. Like we mentioned, Avni Nezah said, and because they didn't have that pleasure, that's why they got to the second stage that even though the whole time that they were learning Torah, even though they had those three sins, and we see how strong the power of the Torah is, that even if they were deep down and they, were, they had those worst sins, three of us that are considered the worst sins as they are, but they were learning Torah, they enjoyed the Torah, they were connected to the Torah, that Torah had a power to help them, that it should be a protection, that they shouldn't get the punishment, even though the Avera was so big. But the power of Torah is so big that can help them, that it should be a protection, that if you're still learning Torah and you enjoy the Torah, you like the Torah, that Torah will help you and protect you, that you won't get the punishment. But then when it came to the second stage, that they didn't have any more Hanoi from the Torah, then came the second stage, this terror can't protect you anymore. And then they got the punishment, and what the punishment was on the three Averas. Not on that sin that they didn't respect the terror. Not on that sin that they didn't enjoy the terror. But when they didn't respect, they lost one power, and then when they didn't enjoy the terror, they lost the second power. And therefore, really the destruction of the first temple and the loss of the lamb was because of those three sins. May Hashem help us that we should always learn Torah in the right way, try always to focus to get to the high level, and we should always appreciate any level that we are now because we'll know always and remember always those words of the Ramchal, that the Ramchal says that any word of Torah that a person learns, no matter where he is and which level it is, it always has an influence on a person and we should be zoiche to be as Mashiach Tzidkeinu B'mehev.